chance to test your focus. Pay attention. Follow the card as Apollo Robbins tries to misdirect you. Now, if we put this inside the deck, we can see about where it is. It's right there inside the center. Yet my job is to be able to track that card and know where it is all the time and to get it somewhere close by. Uh, would you try this yourself? Uh, if you were to guess where it is right now, where would you say it is? I would probably say the middle. The middle? Okay. So, if Are you I watching the deck for that ace? Table, would you point to where you think it is right now? Uh, well, it should be around here. Do you agree? Have you spotted the Ace of Diamonds? Go ahead and take a look. We'll give you a timing. If you can find it in less than three seconds, I'll give you the $100 bill. I'm sorry, but I can't find it. It's actually underneath the $100 bill, right underneath the glass. I believe that's it right here, isn't it? Hey! Of your attention. As you're about to see, your attention is like a spotlight, and you can only shine it on one thing at a time. Put your attentional spotlight to the ultimate test. We've brought in deception specialist Apollo Robbins to really mess with your head. Most people think everything you see is within your field of vision. But actually, your attentional spotlight is only the size of your fingernail. That means it's one one thousandth of your field of view. But I'll give you a fair chance. I'll use something larger, like a playing card. Apollo is a master at misdirecting your attention. No matter how closely you watch him, he still might fool you. Your name, sir? Rudd. Rudd? Rudd. Yeah. Okay. Rudd, Coco, here we go. To begin, Apollo chooses the Ace of Hearts at random and has one of our subjects write her name on it so he can't simply swap in a duplicate card. Now watch closely. Here we go. We'll just put this inside. Rudd, try to keep an eye on this for me. Uh, just use your right hand. Is it? Put your hand on top there. Is that it? That's not it, is it? Nope. Rudd is looking for the ace he thinks is in the deck. Now, Rudd, lift your hand up. Is it that second card right here? Nope. No. You're a keen observer, Rudd. Was it either of those two? Nope. Have you back, spotted the it? ace I yet? A marked card on the back. There it is. But this guy still hasn't seen it. Rudd, we'll keep doing this till you get it. Eventually, I'm sure you will. Was it either of those two? Nope. Nope? Okay. It's because his brain's attentional spotlight can only focus on the cards right in front of him. Even though the ace is in his field of vision, his brain doesn't see it until now. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so how quickly did you see the ace? Did you catch Apollo sticking it to his forehead at the very beginning of the trick? Let's rewind and take another look. When you decide to concentrate on something, such as the cards in Apollo's hands, your eyes stop scanning the environment for stimuli, and your brain's attentional spotlight narrows. Apollo knows this. All he had to do was direct your attention away while he palmed the card and stuck it to it? his forehead. <laughs> Simple, right? Yet you missed it. And so did the people sitting right next to him. The smaller the beam of your attentional spotlight, the better your brain is at appreciating the fine details of what you're focusing on. In other words, narrow focus means high definition. But Apollo knew where your spotlight would be and he exploited it, causing you to miss something right in front of you. On average, it took our subjects at least 30 seconds to notice where the card had gone. It's definitely, but you wrote your name on it, right? Oh, there it is, I'm sorry. I think in general, I, I pay attention pretty well. I definitely, definitely think he could have gone through uh, a, a bunch more cards before I noticed. Pay attention. Follow the card as Apollo Robbins tries to misdirect you. Now, if we put this inside the deck, we can see about where it is. It's right there inside the center. Yet my job is to be able to track that card and know where it is all the time and to get it somewhere close by. Uh, would you try this yourself? Uh, if you were to guess where it is right now, where would you say it is? I would probably say the middle. The middle? Okay. So, if Are you I watching the deck for that ace? Table, would you point to where you think it is right now? Uh, well, it should be around here. Do you agree? Have you spotted the Ace of Diamonds? Go ahead and take a look. We'll give you a timing. If you can find it in less than three seconds, I'll give you the $100 bill. I'm sorry, but I can't find it. It's actually underneath the $100 bill, right underneath the glass. I believe that's it right here, isn't it? Hey! Game with you. Uh, do you have any cash on you? Yeah. What do you got? Uh, 10. $10, okay. Let's do this as kind of like a little bar bet. Crumple it into a bowl. Then would you hold out your hand flat above it? 
Keep your hand flat, as flat as you can. As fast as you can, I want to see you grab that bill. It's pretty quick. So what if we escalated that and I took $100? I say finders keepers. We put that as a crumpled ball on the table. That becomes our target. And I'm going to put my hand about here. So your hand is already halfway there, but do you think it's possible for me to grab the bill before you do? No. Okay. When you see my hand begin to move, I want you to grab the money. Okay. What do you think? Would you take the bet? Your $10 against Apollo's 100? Plus, you have a 0.3 meter head start to grab the money first. Of course you would, right? Well, let's see how this plays out. And he wasn't the only one who took the bet. Dang it. In this case, I get to keep it. Perhaps <laughs> we give you a second chance, all right? Well, sometimes people expect that I'm able to do this because I have fast hands due to the nature of work that I do. Uh, instead of me doing this, I think it'd be more interesting if someone else did it. Uh, Journey, could you join us, please? Hello, Journey. I'm going to ask you to sit up here. Journey, try to get that bill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> so what do you think? Does Apollo have superhuman speed? Does the little girl? Are these participants all incompetent? Is this some kind of sleight of hand trick? Stumped? Apollo is simply using your brain's time lag against you. Once your mind processes his movements and registers that you need to start moving, it's too late. He's already got your money in his hand. <laughs> Keep this game in mind next time you're at a bar or restaurant with friends. Like Apollo and his young assistant did here, you could walk out with a tidy little profit. Great job. High five. That's your allowance for the week. That's all you get. <laughs> what about my $20 bill? She just made it. <laughs> is this true what they say? Time really is money. To list Apollo Robbins is there to pull a fast one. Watch him trick these unsuspecting people on the Las Vegas Strip by applying some of the basic principles we've taught you already. But pay close attention. He might just fool you, too. This is a game with a coin. Now, you can move the coin in different ways, like this. Go ahead. It's your turn. <laughs> if you do that, I'm out of a job. Oh. So, this is a motion, actually. If you move it, you can make it look like it flies across. Whoa. What's interesting, it's almost like gravity. Like, you rewind, and it just flies back up. Apollo relies on the human eye's need to follow motion to continually trick the crowd with his illusions. I want you to hold this in your hand. Squeeze your hand kind of tight. Do you feel the coin in your hand? Yeah. Would you be surprised if I could take it out? I'd be surprised, yes. Open your hand. That's very easy. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Come in this way. Watch it close. Use your hand. Now, in this case, I want you to grab hold of my wrist, but squeeze. Squeeze kind of tight. Watch it close. Now, did you see where it went? No. See, right now, while you're looking at the hand mark, it's not here anymore. It's sitting on your shoulder. Look on your shoulder. Whoa! <laughs> Did you feel that? Whoa. Take it off, man. Take it off. Here, try it again. Hold your hand up a little bit higher. Do that. It's right there. Watch again. See, it's back on your shoulder. Did you see it? Whoa. Take it off. Man. We're going to keep doing this until you catch it, Mark. <laughs> You'll get it eventually. This guy couldn't get it, but did you see how Apollo did that? Here's another shot. Watch closely. Are you paying attention? How'd you do that? He's doing it by using your brain's motion detectors against you. Apollo knows that your brain's orienting response compels you to look at whatever's moving, distracting you with his hand's motion. Did we fool you again? Whoa! <laughs> Think Apollo can make something even bigger disappear? Watch closely. Here, try it again. You'll get it eventually. Here, squeeze it kind of tight in your hand. Do you feel it in your hand? Yeah. When you're squeezing like that, don't pull my finger. That's a different trick. I've seen that trick before. Okay. You still got it? It's back on the shoulder. Not here. Open your hand for a second. Show him it's definitely not there. Open up this hand. Put that hand flat on top of that one. You have to watch close, Mark. This trick's more about the timing. OK, okay I'm going to try to push it in between your hands on the count of three. If you did this slowly, you can see it. One, two, 
Three. Not there. The other shoulder. No. Open your hands. I want you to put your hand on top of his. You look here, you can see it appears in the air, falls out of the air, and lands right back in the palm of the hand. <laughs> see, it's that little thing I was showing you a while ago. What's wow. strange is we end up with this lovely watch that looks just like yours, man. <laughs> <laughs> so how did Apollo do it? How did he steal this guy's watch right off his own wrist? Watch again. Quite simply, Apollo has taken advantage of your brain's need to turn toward motion, forcing you to look where he wants you to. It's back on the shoulder. What's different about this trick is that Apollo is also taking advantage of your peripheral vision. Now here, open your hand for a second. Basically, anything you see outside the center of your gaze. Do you feel it in your hand? Yeah. And Apollo knows that anything moving in your periphery will steal your focus, leaving him free to steal your watch. That's amazing. I appreciate it. It's nice to get applause for a felony. I'm on a mission to explore one of the world's oldest card tricks, the three-card Monty. From England, I'll take my magic to Paris. You feel that these are empty? Correct. It's your choice. <laughs> and Bangkok. Don't give anything away. OK. I'm, I'm not giving anything away. <laughs> Promise? Yes. OK, both your hands. No, I'm not doing... I'll uncover the psychology of how the three-card Monty works. And I'll go head-to-head -head with great card masters <laughs> to unravel its secrets. Were these criminals and mafia members very dangerous people? Yeah. This is the hardest move in all card cheating. Finally, I'll reinvent it, transforming the trick into the most dangerous stunt I've ever attempted. Do not change your mind. Don't change your mind. <sighs> My fascination with cards Magic and illusion began 14 years ago at school. For me, cards were an escape from everyday lessons and learning into the worlds of mystery, danger, and the impossible. Outside of the classroom, whilst my friends played sports, I obsessed myself with playing cards, their origins, their meanings, and their numerous designs and configurations. My obsession has grown into this collection of over a thousand decks from around the world. And not all countries share the same card designs. For example, this German deck is based on the four seasons. Hearts for spring, bells for summer, leaves for autumn, and acorns for winter. One of my most favorite decks of cards is also one of the scruffiest. This hand-drawn deck of cards was made by American prisoners out of milk cartons when prison guards confiscated their real playing cards. It's taken me more than 10,000 hours of practice to master card manipulation. Every night, I'd rehearse complex moves and techniques until my hands ached. But what sparked my passion for cards wasn't a piece of magic, but one of the oldest cons in the world. The Three Card Monty. This is the classic version of the Three Card Monty. You, the player, follow this, the queen, the money card, whilst I mix it up with these red twos. Ready? Follow the queen. Some of you may think she's here. It's not. It's not over here. In fact, she's over here. To pull this trick off, I combine two skills. Sleight of hand, a secret card move with misdirection, which fools you into following the wrong card. So how's it done? Let me show you. Whilst mixing the cards, the operator picks up two cards with his right hand and flashes the bottom card, the queen. Whilst apparently throwing the queen back on the table, he actually throws the top card. That's the sleight of hand, which, when combined with the flash of the queen, fools you into following the wrong card, the misdirection.
The Monty is a centuries-old con that continues to cheat thousands of innocent players every day in cities around the world. Put your money on the queen, loser, loser. Third is not a lot of money. You've got to put some more money on it for me. You want to turn that card over? Oh! And it doesn't always use cards. I've seen the Monty played with bottle tops, cups, shells, even matchboxes. But the idea is always the same, to try to follow one object as it is mixed and lost amongst two or three others. Now, my mission will be to develop the three-card Monty into something far more ambitious and dangerous. My first stop in adapting the classic con is Paris, France, the country where the four most common card suits, the spades, clubs, hearts and diamonds, originated in around 1480. The traditions of magic and cards go back centuries in France. The father of modern magic was a 19th century French magician called Robert Houdin. Many great magicians have since been inspired by Robert Houdin and none more so than Houdini, who named himself after him. One of my favorite pieces of card magic is known today as the trick that fools Houdini. At the peak of his career, Harry Houdini challenged the world he said that if he could see a trick done three times, then he could say exactly how it was done. He was shown this trick and was baffled. Bonjour. Ça va? Germans. Paolo. 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 Nieves. 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 Nice to meet you. Choisis say une carte au hasard. Take a card. Put your name on the card. Finila. For me, this trick demonstrates why the principles at the heart of the Monty, sleight of hand and misdirection, are so powerful. Paolo. This is your card. Queen. La Reine. Watch the card. See this here? Goes in. Watch I place it inside the middle. <laughs> Second time. Second time. Watch this. Follow the Queen. Uh, Reine. Queen goes inside the middle of the deck. You please, you push the card. Push la carte. <laughs> Third time. The troisième fois. Simply fantastic. Watch this. Watch the queen. Watch the queen here. Vous prenez une moitié du du jeu. Lift up half the cards. Watch. The queen goes inside. She goes inside the middle. You place the cards on top. It's not there, is it? Not yet. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more. One more. One more. One more. One more. Final stage. Watch this one more time. Please, you follow the queen. Watch. Follow the queen. Inside the middle, please. <laughs> if you missed it, this is where the final sleight of hand and misdirection happened. Everyone was so focused on my instructions, they missed me placing Paolo's signed card into my mouth. <laughs> this is what magicians rely on, the brain's failure to notice something in vision when its attention is being directed elsewhere.